At the request of al-Assad's government, Russia has started an airstrike campaign over Syria. Moscow stated that they would target extremist groups such as ISIS, but so far, the airstrikes have mainly targeted NATO-supported rebels. And even though most of the mainstream media has put a negative spin on the Russian airstrikes, one thing must be put into perspective. None of the external actors involved in the Syrian conflict are in it for the sake of the Syrian people, democracy or human rights. This is a geopolitical conflict, not a soap opera. Russia is pursuing its own interests in the region, just as the US, Turkey, Iran and Saudi Arabia are respectfully pursuing theirs. Russia has been engaged in the Syrian conflict since the start. Ever since 2011, Russian diplomats provided crucial support in favor of the al-Assad government. By casting vetoes, the Russians prevented the adoption of UN resolutions aimed at banning the al-Assad government from the international community. And now, at al-Assad's request, Putin has launched an airstrike campaign in Syria. Since al-Assad's administration is still the only legal executive authority in the state of Syria, the Russian airstrikes are entirely within international laws. So what does Russia hope to achieve in Syria and how do the airstrikes fit into the Russian geopolitical design? Welcome to Caspian Report by me, Shirvan. It is said that war is a mere continuation of politics by other means. Thus, in order to understand the airstrikes, we must look at Russia's geopolitical objectives in Syria rather than the airstrikes themselves. What is important to understand here is that Putin's administration is made up of veteran Cold War geopolitical analysts. These are chess players and they will link every conflict with every region and will always have something to fall back on. The mainstream media has been so caught up with the Russian airstrikes in Syria that one other crisis has been relatively neglected. The NATO-Russian standoff in Ukraine. It may sound strange, but the airstrikes in Syria have their origins in Ukraine. Those who have followed the events in eastern Ukraine will note that the situation in the recent weeks has been quiet. Too quiet. The separatists haven't made any provocations. No skirmishes have erupted and the rebels have put forth a compromise to the government in Kiev. At the same time, Russia had been building up its military presence in Syria by laying down new pavements for helipads, stockpiling missiles and placing warplanes in positions. Both events in Ukraine and Syria coincided with the UN General Assembly gathering, which was held in late September. During the meeting, Putin requested to meet with Obama and put forth a proposal. The Russian president wanted an end to the sanctions on Russia and for NATO to halt its support to the Ukrainian government. In return, Putin was willing to accept a diplomatic exit for the al-Assad government. Basically, it was a trade-off, Syria for Ukraine. It was an offer Obama couldn't refuse. Yet, that is exactly what he did. Obama rejected the proposal to link Ukraine with Syria. The two leaders shook hands, they took a couple of photos, and immediately following this, Putin made good on his promise and initiated a unilateral airstrike campaign over Syria. And as a symbolic message, the Russians hit the rebels in the town of Homs first, which is outside the scope of operations against ISIS and within the realm of US and Turkish supported rebels. In essence, Russia is playing good cop in Ukraine and bad cop in Syria in order to get the necessary compromises from the US. So far, Washington has rejected to link the Syrian civil war with the standoff in Ukraine, but in every practical sense, whether one wants it or not, these two conflicts are now interwoven. Obama's rejection of Putin's proposal has prompted the Kremlin to pursue their backup plan, which in the traditional Russian sense is just as interwoven but this time involving Iran. You see, right now the airstrikes allow for Russia to put pressure on the US and its allies to hold negotiations regarding the faith of al-Assad's government. The airstrikes also give Russia an influential seat at the negotiation table. 
However, El Assad is only a part of the larger Russian geopolitical plan for the Middle East, and here is where Iran comes into the picture. Remember the Iran-US nuclear negotiations that took place a couple months ago? Despite Russia's best efforts, Iran and the US reached an agreement, which we explained in a previous Caspian report. From the Russian perspective, the Iran-US nuclear agreement opens up Tehran's options and thus significantly diminishes the Russian influence over Iran's foreign affairs. But as Tehran is fiercely engaged in their support for al-Assad, Russia sees an opportunity here to use the Syrian conflict and their seat at the negotiation table to rekindle their relationship with Iran. The reasoning here is that Iran needs Russia in order to achieve their strategic goals in Syria and Iraq. However, if Iran wants Russia's support and vote at the Syrian negotiations, Tehran must make certain geopolitical concessions to Moscow. This essentially means that the Russian airstrikes might even expand into Iraqi territories as a means for Putin to persuade Rouhani. So even though Russia's first attempt to trade Syria for Ukraine has failed, the Kremlin will seek to accomplish this goal by other means, and this is the purpose behind the airstrikes. They increase Russia's leverage in the Syrian negotiations and subsequently they increase Russia's influence over Iran's foreign affairs. The end game is that these two points combined will allow Moscow to strike a deal with Washington for the geopolitical alignment of Ukraine as well as the removal of the sanctions, especially the sanctions targeting the Russian energy and arms industries. So far, the US has shown no interest in striking a deal with Russia. In fact, the airstrikes might even have the opposite effect that Putin had hoped for. Obama is now working on a bill that will extend financial support to Ukraine and the Americans are now pressuring the Europeans to maintain the sanctions on Russia throughout 2016. Furthermore, Obama with the aid of Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu is now increasing his support for the Ukrainian armed forces by indirectly aiding, training and supplying them through Israeli defense contractors. The bottom line is that Russia, much like the US, is taking a risk with the airstrikes. The unintended consequences could go either way. It may very well pave the way for a political deal on Syria and Ukraine, but it may also escalate both conflict zones. Unfortunately, the latter is the most plausible scenario. This was a Caspian report by me, Shirvan. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support more original content like this, Please visit our Patreon page in the description. For now, thank you for watching and Sahol.